Good morning, everybody. My name's JoJo. I had a new format I wanted to do. Uh, it's called Video Essays Minus the Video. It's just going to be sort of audio essays that I am going to read. Uh, they're shorter, and I don't want to devote the time to making graphics for them. Um, some of the concepts here are somewhat abstract to be represented in graphics as well. And I wanted to kick things off with what I call Let Jane Be Evil. Now this, of course, covers uh, Jane Crocker from Homestuck, so if you're not familiar, feel free to tune right out, because I'm not going to build a lot of context for this one. Here we go. Let Jane be evil. On Twitter, there seems to be a great number of people who are equating Jane Crocker's descent into fascism to her imperious condescension. The parallels are there already, from the ships Jane uses to the color scheme. It's not a very difficult parallel to draw. However, I think that the reading is somewhat reductive. Jane Crocker is a woman who, from the very first time we meet her in Homestuck Act 6, has a great deal of privilege. She's the heiress to a baking empire. She lives in a lovely house, and it's implied she takes a great many things for granted. This is even more potent when juxtaposed to her three friends. Jake, who lives alone on a foreboding island, Roxy, who lives with the chess people, and Dirk, who lives in the middle of the ocean. Jane has always acted somewhat entitled. This is nothing new. She's not immature by any stretch, but she does seem out of touch with her friends, defending Crocker Corp when her associates tell her not to. She treats their words with a great deal of skepticism, especially Roxy, a skepticism she never seems to outgrow. People who believe she only went evil due to mind control on her imperious condescension's part reduce the fact that she is a woman who spent her childhood as the heiress apparent to a massive baking conglomerate. So the attitudes she embodies in the epilogues are not enforced, they're learned. If anything, the repulsion we feel when we see Jane, the cognitive dissonance we experience when we see the girl who is bullied by Caliborn and emotionally spurned by Jake, turn into the woman who chokes Earth Sea in both timelines, speaks to how power inevitably corrupts. Her rise to power in Candy is insidious, because she is an unopposed force who is exploiting the masses and imposing her will on the people. Her rise in Meat, too, is for different reasons. In Meat, she experiences the betrayal of her friends that makes her double down on her own feelings of vindication against them. Homestuck 2 and the epilogues feature very bleak readings for each character they feature, Jane in particular. I think it's unfortunate that they went this route, but Jane's descent into fascism makes a great deal of sense, thematically, and exploring her privilege and power is something that's very relevant to today's society. Exploring how people we trust and the ways they can turn against the best interests of society is a relevant discussion. And seeing it reduced to mind control or influence is a reduction that does a disservice to her character and the issues that we face. The biggest takeaway here is not that Jane is evil now. The takeaway is that she's always had the capacity. Everyone does. Many people I've seen blame Roxy and Candy for being complicit in Jane's shenanigans. They blame her for not trying to stop her. But this too is intentional. It's a commentary on how blinded we can be by our perceptions that we fail to notice the things that matter. Of course Roxy hates the Condis. She was raised to believe that she was evil, driving the final blow into HIC's heart. But Roxy could never hate her friend Jane, a virtue that is twisted into a liability, into a failure to see her friend's actions for what they are. The post-Homestuck Homestuck works might not be the most satisfying, but they are at the very least well written. Perhaps exploring the depth in these pieces will give people some appreciation for them. Perhaps in others it will only deepen their resentment. I'm hoping for the former because I for one am sick of seeing the vitriol from the latter camp spill into the conversations I have with good friends. As a closing note, please, Stan Jane Crocker.